For this tutorial of Knitting in the Round with Magic Loop, I'm going to be using a 40 inch circular knitting needle and a ball of Be So Baby yarn. This is a US 5 or 3.75 millimeter knitting needle and the cord length is 40 inches. You want at least a 40 inch cord for doing the Magic Loop technique and that will make more sense as we get moving along. Step one is to cast on the desired number of stitches for your project. You may use any cast on technique you prefer. I'm going to be using the knit cast on, which starts with a slip knot and inserting your one side of the knitting needle into the slip knot and tightening it up. Then, with the second knitting needle, you're going to insert into that slip knot as if to knit, yarn over your needle, pull a loop through, and attach that loop created on the right hand needle over to the left hand needle to now increase from one stitch to two and we're going to repeat this step until we have our desired number of stitches on the left hand needle if you're knitting left-handed this would be opposite for you you'd be knitting with your left hand and attaching the stitches to your right so just be mirrored from what i'm doing so we're going to knit into the stitch just made pull that loop onto the same needle that is holding all of the loops. So now we've cast on four stitches and we'll just keep doing this until we have our desired number of stitches. For the technique today, I will be doing an even number of stitches, but you can cast on as many stitches as you need for any given project. Okay, I've cast on 30 stitches for the demonstration. And as you can see, with this long circular, there's no way I'd be able to knit smoothly in the round with this small number of stitches but that's what's so cool about this technique so our first step was to cast on the number of stitches that we needed for the project step two is to move the stitches to the center of the cable and find the middle point between the stitches what does the middle point mean so for example i cast on 30 stitch stitches so i want to find the space between the first 15 and the second 15 so we'll count across 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So there's 15 on one side and 15 on the other. And so now I'm going to make a little bend in my cable and pull that loop like this. Okay, so now we have 15 stitches on one side of the knitting needle and 15 stitches on the other side of the knitting needle and we have the cable starting to loop in the center. Step three is to continue gently sliding these stitches across until they are both on the opposite sides of the actual needle part of the circular needle. like that. That's what you want your work to look like at the end of step three. Step four, you want to turn the needle so they're horizontal to the table or the floor and make sure that the first cast on stitch is on the needle closest to you. If you're unsure what the first cast on stitch is, you can use your tail as a reminder. Depending on the cast on technique you use, this could be the stitch with or without the tail. Long tail cast on will have the tail at the last cast on stitch and knit cast on will have the tail at the first cast on stitch. So we said we want to be prepared with the first cast on stitch and the needle closest to us so that because we did knit cast on, it'll be the stitch that is attached to that tail. So we want to turn our work now so that that is the stitch closest to us. Okay, the first stitch worked is the one in front of us. For step five, you want to make sure that the tail is hanging down towards the table or floor, and you want to make sure that the working yarn is over the back needle. This is done because you'll be knitting the first stitch. If you are purling the first stitch, you will let your work hang down between the needles. This is similar to having your work in the back to knit and you're having your working yarn in the front to purl. So this is what your work should look like 
when you're at the end of step five. For step six, you want to pull the back needle out so the back stitches are on the cable now. But do not pull so hard that you remove the loop between the two halves of stitches from the cast on. That first loop will decrease in size as you create the second loop from pulling the back needle out. Be careful to keep the working yarn toward the back as well and you want to bring the needle into the first stitch as if to knit. And this is what your work should look like at the end of step six. For step seven, we're going to knit across all of the stitches on our front needle using the working yarn from the back needle. And you want to pull a little extra snug on the first couple of stitches just so we don't have that jog between the uh, two sets of stitches. Okay, this is what your work should look like at the end of step seven. For step eight, once you have knit the first half of stitches, you want to turn your needle so the unworked stitches are now closest to you, like this. Pull the back needle, the one you just worked, so the just worked stitches are resting on the cable. Then slide the unworked stitches onto the front needle. Okay, now we're going to pay attention to our ta tail is in the way, so we want to make sure it's facing down like it was before. And we'll keep our working yarn towards the back over the work. And so now we're ready to knit these second half of stitches for our round. This is what your work should look like at the end of step eight. For step nine, we're going to bring the back needle around and prepare to knit the first stitch on the front needle. And then we will knit those stitches. This is what step nine should look like. Okay, at the end of step now, nine, we have now completed a full round of our 30 stitches that we cast on. So now we're going to simply just repeat these steps to continue working in the round for the desired number of rounds for whatever project you're making. And anytime you come to the beginning and end of the front and back, you want to pull snug on your needles for the first stitch or two just to tighten up that jog. After we've worked several rounds, this will go away, but it's just in the first couple of rounds that it's an issue. So I'm just going to pull a little extra tight on that first stitch or two just to tighten up that space. Follow the link in the video description for the link to a really wonderful blog post that I wrote with written instructions for each of these steps with close-up detailed photos and some fun pattern suggestions for knitting in the round with Magic Loop Technique. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions at all, please feel welcome to leave them for me in the comments. And if you check out the video description, I've provided links for everything we talked about in this video. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you in the next video.